Hello there guys, Matt here again and today I'm going to show you the results of pouring an epoxy sealer onto a concrete worktop that I've casted. I haven't got a video on casting the worktop because at the time I was in a rush and didn't want to do that um, and also it's the first time that I've done it so I've got the concrete worktop completely filled in, all of those little air bubbles that come up to the surface um, they have to be filled, it needs to be a completely smooth surface so you can see here all these little holes that were originally there have been filled in with a concrete slurry which is literally two parts cement to uh, one part water and you just rub it in with a glove let it set for two hours then you use 200 P240 grit or P220 grit um, wet and dry paper like this wet and dry silicon carbide paper um, or sandpaper would work. That's just the type of paper that would give scratches on the surface enough to um, allow the, the sealer to stick to it um, and also not show the scratches through when it's finished. Um, I've got a lot of experience with carbon fibre products and that was, that's just a really good grade to use to get a really good key for epoxy to stick to or a polyurethane paint to stick to um, and take impact. Um, and not delaminate from the surface. I've got the surface completely level, so get a nice big. I've got a nice big um, level here. Make sure that the surface is completely level because I've got a self-leveling epoxy. I'll put a link in the description for it afterwards. I'm not affiliated with the products at all, so it's just my recommendation. You want to make sure that it's completely level. If you look there in both directions, so and what I've done is I've basically got these uh, battens running across the floor um, so that I can get my fingers underneath and I can scrape under here as well because when it drips over the edge you want to be able to scrape underneath the edge um, to get those drips off so it doesn't set with those drips and I've got these shims here to make the, make the um, concrete level because my flooring is not completely level as it goes from one side of the room to the other. Easiest way guys to see what your surface is going to look like after it's got a high gloss finish on it is to get some acetone onto a rag. So you can see even though it's grey it's going to turn out brown because that's what it looks like when it's wet. So now I've mixed up my um, epoxy with a 2 to 1 ratio. Uh, two parts base, which is the glass cast base, and then one part um, glass cast hardener. And I poured the first bit, the first batch, um, and I bought these from Easy Composites. And they say that the first you should you should pour your first batch, and then straight away start mixing the, mixing the second, and pour them next to each other and then just scrape it to all the edges, let it drip off the edge, and I'm just going to go with a brush uh, around the edges to um, wet the edges and to allow it to break the surface tension between the edge and the top, uh, just so it allows the, the epoxy to drip over the edge. Um, so I'll show you a bit of that. But you can see here now the um, how it's it's a lot more brown and you can see all these little specks in here they are the slurry that I filled it with so all these white dots you can see are the dark dots there and that's the slurry and as this um, epoxy is going off it's got a something called a defoaming agent in it which they won't tell you but what it does is it allows the it, it forces all the bubbles to come to the top and and they pop and that's what makes it such a smooth surface um, but you have to make sure when this is curing that it's in a completely dust-free room or at least no one walks into the room and causes the dust to move. So I'm going to leave this room for 24 hours before it's touch dry. Um, no one can come in this room um, and this will cure hopefully completely smooth over the top. And you can see how this is completely level because this um, the epoxy is not going left or right or backwards and forwards in any particular um, stark way, it's not going backwards and forwards, left or right, in any drastic way, and that's just exactly how I poured it. Um, so make sure you get the, the 
surface that you're pouring onto completely level before you pour because it will give it a nice flat top. Now I've just going around this whole surface with a spreader, a notch spreader like this, which you usually use to um, put a deep a tile adhesive down with. I spread the liquid, joined it all together um, because there was two batches, so I spread them together to make sure it was mixed properly. And then I've just gone around pushing with this notch spreader all the way up to the edge and then letting it overflow over the edge and basically getting this brush and going along the edge here and basically what that's going to do is allow all the excess from the top to drip over the edge and give it a really uniform edge um, just as flat as the top is and then after about a couple of hours of this setting I'm just going to come in here with something sharp straight edge like this I'm going to scrape all of the drips off the bottom here to make sure that the drips are not visible when it's finished. So there we go, I've poured it all now and I've just scraped the surface to make sure that the epoxy is, in, there's not too much epoxy in one area so I've spread it out as much as possible with the uh, tile adhesive spreader and now I'm just going across the edges here and painting a little bit of epoxy, that, the, the stuff that's dripped off underneath because um, when this is in use, there will be things like glasses of water being put on it and if it spills and then goes under and then into the concrete, the epoxy could potentially delaminate from the, um, the surface because um, concrete absorbs water. So you don't want water to get, to get in just underneath the edges. Uh, so that's it uh, and I'll show you a fully cured uh, video when it's done in 24 hours and um, show you how tough it is. So it's been about 36 hours now. I've left the room at 20 degrees, I left the radiators on to make sure that the room stayed at the right temperature. Um, because with epoxy if you leave it at a, a, low, a too low temperature um, it can start absorbing moisture from the room. Uh, it takes too long to cure and then it screws the whole thing up. So keep that in mind if you're curing with epoxy. Um, and it's now cured and you can see it in the sunlight and also in the shade. It's very, very tough. And it's looking very, very glassy, so I'm quite happy. I'll show you what it looks like now. So here we have the stone in the sunlight. You can see all these little black spots and swirly bits. That's all the slurry that I put over the top. This edge looks a little bit more funky. And then, in the shade, you can really see that shine on it. So you can see how flat the whole surface is now. That's a reflection of the windows up there. So as I move across, you can't see any warping in the, in the actual in the surface, even though before there was a slight warp in the surface, now everything is completely level because this is a self-leveling uh, epoxy, which is really, really nice. So guys, tell me what you think about it. If you like this, um, this video, I'm gonna probably make another one for a table. I'll show you the whole pouring process of the concrete because um, this one looks quite different to the ones that I've seen on anywhere else on YouTube. It looks a little bit more natural stone effecty. Um, so let me know if you like it and I'll do another tutorial on how this is made um, for a dining room table or a bedside table. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers.